Gunjun believes everything should follow the proper order when dating someone, from holding hands, to kissing, to doing the jungle course. That's why he always ends up breaking up with his boyfriends when it's time to get serious. Their sizes don't meet Gunjun's standards. Then there's Jung Siyuk, who meets his standards, but defies the order Gunjun faithfully follows. Will he break things off or will he end up defying his 1 to 10 rule? Our story starts when our MC's professor ends their class for the day, and one of his friends invites him to go drinking. The MC refused, because he was going to be busy later. The friend still tried to convince our MC, Gunjun, to change his mind, but the latter couldn't be talked out of it. That's when the friend explained that his girlfriend broke up with him, and tried to use the sympathy card to recruit another drinking buddy. But in return, Gunjun just tells him that he's going to have a 100-day date today. Mr. Brokenhearted failed to see that Gunjun's 100-day date was more important than his broken heart. Gunjun also pointed out that the friend simply wants to feel better by getting his other friends dead drunk with him. Gunjun then starts his unsolicited narration of how dating should go. In his opinion, dating should begin with a causal relationship. After just being friends for about a couple of months, they should confess their feelings and start dating for real. After a week or so, they should hold hands and then hug. Around day 50 of dating, they have their first kiss, which will lead to day 100, where they finally go down to real business. Despite Gunjun's weird preferences in dating, his friends don't seem to mind and just let him be. Mr. Brokenhearted then turned to their other friend, Du Yun, who seemed undecided at first, but only because he was preoccupied with staring at a group of other students not far from where they were. Gunjun asks Du Yun if he's staring at the long-haired Sunbei the latter supposedly had a crush on. Do you didn't deny it, only his mood turned sour after he saw that the long-haired dude was getting too close to another dude and wondered if the two of them were dating. Reading the atmosphere, Gunjun rejects the thought, saying they're both tall, so there's no way that would be possible. Since, of course, height should always matter on who you should date and not. That aside, Gunjun admits that he doesn't like the long-haired dude's vibe and doesn't understand why it seemed popular. At the same time, he wondered if he had a big baton, because otherwise, he would never do the hanky-panky with him. With an emphasis on the ever of never, the duo's very enlightening conversation was interrupted by another friend, who suddenly got curious about what they were whispering about to each other. Gun Jun used this opportunity to get away from the group, however. As for Du Yun, his sour mood persisted, and their friends knew he was not in the mood to drink with them either. Meanwhile, back to Gun Jun. He did feel bad about rejecting his friends, but today is really important to him. After leaving the subway, someone called Gunjun over. It was a four-eyed gentleman named Jae Hee, whom Gunjun is currently dating. He apologized for being unable to see Gunjun often, since he got busy. Not that Gunjun minded, since they still had constant communication. And the single red rose Jae Hee handed him in place of the 100 roses he said he wanted to give did the trick. Fast forward to the hotel room, Gunju nervously stared at the flower that Jae got him while he waited for Jae Hee to finish preparing. Not long after, the latter returns to the room and sits beside Gunju, asking him if he was nervous about what they were about to do. Well, Gunju is indeed a bit nervous, but more than anything, he really just wants to enjoy it. Everything seems to go well at first. Mr. Four Eyes even offered to turn off the lights, thinking that Gunju would be too embarrassed. Anyways, so preparations were in order, of course, and Jay he was being so careful and caring, and just based on how he's leading and doing things, one would think that he really has something big with him. This made Gunjun really excited, and insisted that they just proceed with the main event. Unfortunately, it turned out to be not what he expected. The pain that Gunjun was preparing himself to experience didn't come. And as if that wasn't enough, Jay he also finished first. He even had the audacity to ask for another round. Gunjun have had enough though, and instead told Jae Hee to just wash up instead. As Four Eyes went to the bathroom to wash up, all Gunjun could think about was how it was a failure again this time around. And so, Gunjun left the room, the single rose, along with the message of not contacting him again anymore. He just dumped his now ex-boyfriend. At the end of the day, Gunjun still ended up coming to where his friends had been drinking. He's now single again like the rest of them. He couldn't say anything, as they started teasing him about it. Gunjun and his friends continued with the drinking and feeling sorry for themselves. The brokenhearted was saying how he never meant to break up with his girlfriend, but he had to because he has a big heart. Gunjun was just silently drowning himself in his self-induced misery, although the moment his friend mentioned the size of his banana, just out of nowhere. 
Gun Jun had no choice but to excuse himself. Our MC tells his friends that he's just going to call someone, to which they start teasing that perhaps he's going to make up with Jae Hee. Well, Gun Jun did call Jae Hee, but it doesn't seem like it was because he wanted to make up. The latter is clearly upset about the dumping, but Gun Jun wants to come clean and tells his ex-boyfriend that he dumped him because his banana is small. Normally I would find this reason ridiculous, but what the heck? This is fiction and is the main plot of the story. Anyways, Jaehee asks if Gunjun had been drinking a lot, and although Gunjun did admit to that, he still wanted to make it clear that he dumped Jaehee because of the size of his banana, and he doesn't like that because he wants to be with someone who owns a big one. Jaehee started scolding him when his ranting seemed to get out of hand, warning him that someone nearby might hear him. And that was when Gunjun noticed that someone was indeed nearby and eavesdropping on his call from the shadows. Gunjun then drops the call, walks up to the eavesdropper, and casually greets him. Our MC tells him off about eavesdropping and accuses him of also having a small banana. That is until he realizes that the man before him looks familiar. While Gunjun starts focusing on the dude's long hair and voicing his biased preferences, the other dude casually admits that he has, in fact, a big banana with him. He even points out how Gunjun was crying because all the guys he had been with only had small ones. Well, Gunjun vehemently denies it that the long-haired dude just had to give him the benefit of the doubt. Instead, he casually asks Gunjun if he wants to do it with someone with a big banana. At first, Gunjun refuses. After all, what he wants is a lover with a big banana. This brings us back to his lover, who he broke up with because of his small banana. Eventually, Gunjun realized that he had been talking nonsense, and in circles. He was just about to cut their conversation short when the long-haired dude suddenly asked Gunjun to do it with him, since he really likes Gunjun and the latter did say that he hadn't been with someone with a big banana. That's when Gunjun started going off that he's not someone cheap. After all, he did wait 100 days just to do it with his lover. Not that it ended well. The long-haired dude once again tries to convince Gunjun, assuring him that he's good at it, and that the former would definitely be satisfied with his banana. And so, against his better judgment, Gunjun was dragged away by someone he doesn't know. Fast forward to Gunjun's second hotel room for the night. He still seems unsure if he's going to go through with it, and the long-haired dude seemed concerned. This just made Gunjun a bit braver than he really felt, and instead just told the dude to just start doing it. And so, not long after, Gunjun found himself at his mercy, as the latter started confidently playing with his nip-nops. And it's working, as Gunjun started feeling so sensitive, which he blames the alcohol for. When the long-haired dude comments on how Gunjun's banana is now alert, even though he barely did anything, Gunjun complains that it's only because the former was playing with his nip knops so hard. Once again, the long-haired dude rested his case and instead opened a packet of massage gel to help prepare Gunjun's black hole. As he did, he tried kissing Gunjun, but the latter covered his mouth, telling him that they can do the humpy pumpy, but not the kissing. Once again, the long-haired dude lets it go, claiming that he'll just kiss Gunjun at another time. Clearly, he doesn't want this relationship to end after just one night. Anyways, back to the preparations, just like what the long-haired dude claimed earlier. He's indeed good at doing the humpy pumpy, seeing as he immediately found Gunjun's sweet spot, sending Gunjun to the edge despite himself. In fact, he finished shortly after with just the help of the dude's hand, something that even Jay he wasn't able to do. Gunjun was just feeling sorry for himself, feeling so embarrassed for suddenly finishing like that, but it seemed like that was just the beginning. The long-haired dude suddenly apologized to him, claiming that Gunjun was now loose enough, so there was no reason to delay the main event. Gunjun, on the other hand, started panicking internally as he saw the size of the banana that he was supposed to eat soon. And perhaps for the first time in his life, Gunjun wonders if it's a banana that he can actually eat. As the long-haired dude started to move, the only thing that filled Gunjun's mind was to make the former pull out he then commented how Gunjun is still so tight. Despite all the preparations he did, he brought up the fact that he won't steal a kiss from Gunjun. This made Gunjun relax a bit, which resulted in the dude finally invading the cave with his baton. Although it was Gunjun's long-awaited wish, he clearly did not expect it to be this uncomfortable. As the saying goes, be careful what you wish for. I actually want to roast him more, but it's still chapter 3, so let's save it for later. Anyways, this time Gunjun went on a long internal monologue, perhaps wishing to be back in the arms of his ex, who obviously couldn't hold a candle to Mr. Long-Haired Dude here. 
Realizing that there was no salvation for him, if he didn't do something about it himself, Gunju needlessly surrendered while in tears. He could feel that the cave is on the verge of tearing. And no one wants a torn cave, especially if it's his. But the long-haired dude did not share his sentiments, and instead just promised that he'd be gentle, since it was Gunjun's first with someone with a big banana. Of course, it's not because he feels good at how tight Gunjun's cave is. And so, the Humpy Pumpy continued. After a while, Gunjun seemed to slowly resign himself to his fate and is just hoping to get used to it soon. That is until his muddled rationality cleared and realized who the person in front of him actually was. Clearly, today is not our MC's day. Once again, an internal monologue commenced, with Gunjun regretting all the decisions he had made tonight. As everyone may have realized, Gunjun is, in fact, doing the humpy pumpy with the senior. He claimed he would never ever do the nasty with from chapter one. Then again, the size of his senior's baton did exceed his expectations, which calls for some leeway of sorts. All over now, more than ever, Gunjun just wants everything to be over with. Not only is he in so much pain, the humiliation he's feeling isn't making things any better. On the other hand, seeing as his partner isn't at all feeling good about how things are, Mr. Senior admitted how badly he wants to move, but it's also hurting him. So he's holding back. He then proclaimed that since there's nothing they can do about it, he'll just let Gunjun get used to it for now. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it right. He did say for now. For our long-haired senior, this is not a one-time thing, but it's actually the first of many things. Not that I'm complaining. The hidden meaning of the statement did bother Gunjun, but he's really more concerned about ending the painful and humiliating situation he's in now. And so, he tells the man responsible for everything to just do the deed and then take it out. Eventually, Mr. Senior did as told. His weapon finally retreated from the tight cave and even ridding himself of the rubber. Despite himself, Gunjun blushed furiously now that he's face to face with the big banana while he's in sound mind. What happened after the face-off, however, isn't what he expected at all. Without warning, Miss Senior suddenly gave our pale and petite MC the icing on top through an unexpected facial. Well, the long-haired dude did feel bad about what he did, so he tried to at least wipe Gunjun's face. But of course, there's no way the younger man will let that happen. Worried that his senior would recognize him, Gunjun desperately covered his face and instead talked the dude into washing up and letting him wipe his face himself. Mr. Longhair didn't insist, and once again did as told, leaving the mentally and physically exhausted Gumjun to once again commit to do it and run maneuver for the night. As quietly as he could, despite feeling so sore, Gumjun took his stuff and quickly got dressed. He promised himself to stay hidden from now on, so as not to catch his senior's attention. By the time Mr. Senior finally finished washing up, Gunjun was nowhere to be found anymore. The latter is, of course, very disappointed. And I do sympathize with him. Although the six-pack abs he has makes it hard for me to continue feeling that way. As for Gunjun, he eventually managed to get back to his place despite the pain on his bum-bums. He was worrying about how he was going to get to school the next day when someone suddenly asked him if he was feeling okay. Turning around, Gunjun saw that the concern was coming from his neighbor next door, who gave him a knowing look before he went inside his own place. Well, my guess is that Mr. Neighbor had been in a similar situation one too many times, thus he's familiar with the signs and symptoms. Then again, getting weird looks from his neighbor is the least of his worries. Once he's finally in the safety of his place, Gunjun once again laments on the reality of doing the nasty with his senior. Gunjun woke up with a jolt from one of his friends and got interrogated on why he left them last night. He then went on and told Gunjun how after he left the two of them, they continued to drink until they got so drunk. Mr. Heartbroken even made a pass on some stranger. While thinking about his ex, this is precisely one of the reasons why you shouldn't get too drunk, my dear viewers. Because it's either you'll humiliate yourself by calling out to some stranger or worse, do something you shouldn't with said stranger. Just like what our traumatized MC did. After being bugged about why he suddenly disappeared last night, Gunjun had no choice but to remember what had happened. After which he surprised his friends by suddenly overreacting in his feeble attempt to forget about it. Seeing as he's not willing to answer properly, Gunjun's friends think that it's got something to do with his ex. After all, the last time they were with him, he did say he was calling his ex. Although, of course, that's not the reason why he can't tell them. In all honesty, it's just because his sweetheart of love image will be ruined if they find out that he broke his own rules after he got drunk and did the nasty with one of their sunbays. As a result, his friends think that he's acting very suspicious, 
by being so overly cautious of his surroundings, not to mention walking weirdly. Well, at least that's what most of his friends feel. Du Yun, however, looked like he caught on to something. Anyways, the day went by with Gunjun being zoned out most of the time. Most of his friends and classmates just let it go, but not good old Du Yun. During one of their free time, Du Yun invites Gunjun to go smoke with him, which is just a pretense since what he really wants to know is what exactly his friend did the day before. Gunjun tries to deny it, even though he's all jittery and nervous, and since actions speak louder than words, Du Yun isn't at all convinced. Suddenly, Gunjun saw the very person that he was hoping to not see again. To make matters worse, the said person noticed him too. Gunjun turned away, as he tried to be inconspicuous, but it didn't help at all, and before he knew it, the long-haired senior was now standing in front of them and amicably greeting him. Gunjun's immediate response was to act as if he didn't know him, and his senior immediately caught on and tried to act accordingly. But even when he tried acting oblivious, Gunjun still wouldn't acknowledge him. In fact, he just suddenly pulled Du Yun as he ran away from the area. Instead of feeling upset, it just seems that his senior was just amused by his junior's actions. As for Gunjun and Du Yun, they eventually stopped in some deserted area. Well, more like Gunjun had to stop because his back is killing him. And we wonder why. Anyways, Du Yun seems to finally put two and two together and asked Gunjun if he hung out with her sunbae yesterday. When Gunjun tried to play innocent, Du Yun straight out asked if Gunjun had in fact done the deed with the said senior. Gunjun didn't bat an eye as he denied the accusations. After all, how could he do the nasty with someone that he's not even dating? But Du Yun is not at all convinced. It's just too suspicious that Gunjun will run away like that from their senior, who obviously just wanted to say hello. But Gunjun still stubbornly denies it. He claims to be just tired and suffering from a fever due to his hangover and eventually uses it as an excuse to leave early, claiming that he'll just go take a medicine for fever and go to sleep. Although with how Gunjun is rubbing his waist despite claiming that he's having a fever, Du Yun didn't buy it at all. After sneaking around, Gunjun eventually made it back to his place. It's once again lamenting his hypocrisy. After he broke his own rules on dating, on the same day, he was singing about it to his friends. And the worst part, it seems, is that his senior seemed to have recognized him as well and looked like he wanted to get to know him more. Gunjun is at a loss on how he's going to avoid his senior, the senior we start and get attracted to, not to mention owning an insane weapon. All these conflicting thoughts suddenly made Gunjun remember the image of his sunbae when they were doing the deed the night before. Although he immediately caught himself and blamed his tiredness for it, not wanting to dwell on it any longer, he just forced himself to go to sleep. The next day, Gunjun is back at school and still acting all sus. His situation only got more bothersome after he realized that his long-haired senior, Jung si yak had somehow managed to get his contact number and even messaged him. Gunjun's friends found him and once again tried to interrogate him about his suspicious behavior. They then accuse him of already dating someone in secret this time, which Gunjun strongly denies. Eventually, Gunjun refuses their invitation to eat together, as he feigns feeling unwell and wants to just get some rest. Later that day, Gunjun found a secluded area in the university. It was a place that people didn't usually go to, so he was hoping that his senior wouldn't be able to find him there. He really doesn't know what to do in this situation, and wants to ask someone for advice, only he doesn't know who to ask it from. Gunjun then started going down memory lane as he remembered the first guy that he dated back in high school, Don Chan. It was their senior year, and they had just turned 20 when their day 100 of dating came up. They were both each other's firsts, so they decided to do the deed after day 100. It was an uncomfortable first experience for Gunjun, especially since he was on the receiving end. Although he was hopeful that it would eventually get better with time. However, this didn't stop him from getting curious and asking his then-boyfriend if he could try being the Tachi. But lo and behold, the other guy got defensive. At first, he tried to talk Gunjun out of it, saying that he was having such thoughts because he was just not used to it yet. When this doesn't seem to work, he then eventually used, it's because you don't love me card. Not wanting to compromise their relationship, Gunjun just gave up and remained the Nico. Days passed, and the two of them had done it several times already. But even then, Gunjun can't figure out if he's really suited to be the Nico. He had heard that doing the nasty is something that a couple should feel good about doing together. However, that isn't really the case for Gunjun and Dong Chan. In fact, Gunjun's banana toy is better than his boyfriend's real banana. With curiosity getting the better of him, 
Gunjun eventually decided to train himself in the role he was volunteered to do. It was hard at first, especially since he's doing it by himself. Plus, he's trying to fit in something bigger than Dongchan's. Heck, Gunjun's banana is actually bigger than Dongchan's, and his toy banana is bigger than his. So just imagine how he felt. No, wait, don't imagine. We don't want our channel getting flagged. Anyways, after his preparations, Gunjun eventually started playing with his toy. It took a while, but he eventually got used to it and even started servicing himself. In fact, the toy is doing a better job than Dong Chan's banana in helping Gunjun feel good. Getting used to it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt, though, which made Gunjun wonder if a day will ever come when he'll actually start feeling good with the real thing. In the days that followed, Gunjun eventually started feeling less enthusiastic when doing it with his boyfriend. He's so used to having a big banana that the small one is just drawing a meh. Still, he likes doing the nasty, so after Dong Chan, he went on and tried dating several guys. Unfortunately, all of them are around Dong Chan's size. Fast forward to the present timeline, Gunjun reflected on the fact that in all of his dating years, only Dong Chan surpassed the 100 day benchmark. He did genuinely like all of his exes, but still their bananas pale in comparison with what his sunbae had and how it made him feel. It was the first time that he ever felt like that when doing the nasty with someone. Somehow, he wonders if he really did want them to stop doing the humpy pumpy. Although it's indeed a size someone can't easily get used to, it was also a banana that left such a huge impression on him. Puns intended. Then again, all he felt was pain. He doesn't even know if he actually felt good at some point. Sizes aside, Gumjun had always avoided dating anyone from school since it's hard to completely cut them off. And yet, here's the guy who doesn't only have a monstrous banana, has a long hair that he hates so much, but is also a senior from school, not to mention in the same major. To say that Gunjun was unlucky is just an understatement. As our MC mentally beat himself for his misfortune, someone suddenly called out to him. Think of the devil, and he shall come. Gunjun was rendered speechless, especially when the first thing that his sunbae said was to ask why he hadn't answered him. He was shaking, but he eventually managed to run away again. Only this time someone is coming after him. Gunjun mentally urged his sunbae not to chase after him, while at the same time wondering how someone who smokes like his senior doesn't look like he's going to be out of breath anytime soon. Realizing that simply running away isn't going to cut it, Gunjun decided that he has a better chance if he hides first instead. And so, he entered the building and eventually hid inside one of the bathroom stalls. Unfortunately, just as he thought that he was safe, his senior suddenly appeared and closed the stall's door behind him, effectively trapping Gunjun and locking themselves inside. Jung Siok immediately asked why Gunjun was running away from him, and if it was because his banana wasn't good enough for him either. Gunjun tried to play oblivious, but of course, his senior didn't fall for it. To make his point, Mr. Longhair suggested that they do it one more time since Gunjun doesn't remember anything that happened to them the previous day. Without even waiting for his consent, the older dude started being touchy-feely, sending Gunjun into a panic which eventually led him to admit that he in fact remembered. Still, that didn't stop his sunbae from attempting to do the nasty with him then and there. He's even come prepared having fished out a rubber out of nowhere and wearing it in no time at all. And just like that, they started doing the humpy pumpy. Thanks to what they did the previous day, this time around it was easier for the both of them. Not long after, Gunjun eventually finished first, which just added to Gunjun's long list of humiliating experiences. Fast forward to the end of it. Long-haired Sunbei was just outside the bathroom stall, as he asked Gunjun how it was, but words of affirmation were still so hard for Gunjun to give. Not wanting to push, the older dude just invited Gunjun to get a meal together instead. Gunjun agreed to the invitation and told his senior to wait for him in front of the door, since it would look weird if they left the bathroom together. The latter eventually agreed, after he tried to make Gunjun promise to come, although we all know he'll be stood up this time. Later that day, Gunjun is back to his place, feeling sorry and criticizing himself for what had happened in the bathroom. Not only did he do it again with someone that was supposed to be a one-time fling, but they also did it in a public place of all places. On second thought though, although it did still hurt, somehow he also liked it. As soon as Gunjun realized this, he immediately went straight for his phone as he tried to contact someone. The thought of getting comfortable with this weird relationship he has with his sunbae just doesn't sit right with Gunjun. It's just crazy and spells trouble. He needs to put a stop to it, and he can only start doing that 
if he starts a normal relationship with someone else. Gunjun was by himself as he played with his empty cup, deep in thought. He made a promise to himself that this time around, he dates someone who fits his mind and body. Turning back time to a few days ago, Gunjun had met with his friend, Lee Yoon Sung. He desperately asked him to be introduced to someone. Which just sounds so ridiculous and trivial, especially to someone like Lee Yoon Sung, who seems to be a very busy person. He Yoon Sung asks him why he wants to go on a blind date, even though Gunjun is already dating someone. That was when the latter admitted that they had already broken up, which is why he needs to start dating someone else again. Otherwise, the one-time thing will not just happen twice, but perhaps even thrice or more. Not that he can ever dare tell that to his friend. Of course, the bewildered friend eventually gave in and started fiddling with his phone to try and look for someone who might fit Gunjun's type and even took a picture of Gunjun as he did. Being lost in thought, Gunjun absentmindedly asked for someone who also had a big birdie, making things awkward between them for a bit. Anyways, it seems that Lee Yoon Sung doesn't really mind Gun Jun's specific preferences. Then again, it's not like there's a way for him to find out if the guy he's setting up with Gun Jun does have a big birdie or not. Still, Lee Yoon Sung did manage to find someone for Gun Jun to meet. In fact, he was even able to arrange for their meeting within a few days, and in the same cafe. After promising to contact Gun Jun again, once the time is finalized, Lee Yoon Sung left for his practice. Back to the present, a couple of days after that brief meeting. Gunjun is in the cafe and fiddling with his phone as he waits for his blind date. Jung Siok was persistent and kept on asking if his banana was really not good enough for Gunjun, since he really didn't get a response. This made Gunjun reflect on the matter. In fact, he's not really sure how to answer Jung Siok's question. After all, it's only been a couple of days since he had known him. Although the monstrous banana is actually a plus, still, Doing the nasty with someone he doesn't really know is a big no-no in Gunjun's books. And it didn't only happen once with a second time even happening in such a public place too. Although it's true that it was also partly Gunjun's fault since he didn't even resist properly in his perspective, Jung Siok is a player, to put it nicely, for our young audiences. And this is why for the last couple of days, after that incident in the bathroom, Gunjun made sure to avoid all the places that Jung Siok usually hung out. He was overly cautious of his surroundings, if only to make sure that the part two didn't reach the part three. This doesn't mean that Gunjun stopped thinking about Jung Siok though, even though he's really not his type. And what's more, because of his senior's latest message, now Gunjun can't stop thinking about Jung Siok's banana either. Suddenly, Gunjun's self-inflicting thoughts were interrupted by someone's inquiry of his identity. It was the blind date that Gunjun had desperately been looking forward to meeting. Gunjun started acting docile and shy after the dude introduced himself as Ji Yeon Si Woo. Although it didn't seem to have the effect that he was hoping to have, since Si Woo already knew from Lee Yoon Sung that it was Gunjun who pestered him to be set up with a blind date as soon as possible. Si Woo seems chill and composed, and so far, nice since he offered Gunjun a refill of his drink. I mean, people who feed others are nice people after all. Or is that just me, since I'm craving some iced coffee right now? Anyways, fast forward to when the two of them settled down with a comfortable vibe. Si Yan Wu asked Gun Jun for the reason why he suddenly wanted to have a blind date. After all, from what Si Yan Wu could tell, Gun Jun is the popular type. The former admitted that he wasn't really thinking of showing up today, but eventually changed his mind when he saw Gun Jun's picture. And as if that wasn't enough, this Si Yan Wu dude even straight out confessed that he likes Gun Jun and wonders if Gun Jun feels the same. Okay, stop right there, it's just red flag after red flag. Someone called the dude with the huge banana. This is clearly bound to end up a disaster. Unfortunately, despite his long list of past ex-boyfriends, our MC couldn't see it at all. In fact, he started compromising his standards. At least he was cautious enough to try and asked to meet up more before he decided on the matter. But then Si Yang Wu dropped a line that reminded Gun Jun of Jung Si Yak, which eventually led to Gun Jun's head suddenly being filled with thoughts of his senior. To distract himself from such unwelcome thoughts, Gunjun tells Si Yun Wu that they should just meet more, which the latter took positively. In fact, he even attempted to hold Gunjun's hand, even though our MC just said that his dating style is to take things slow. Red flags aside, Gunjun looks around the cafe after feeling like he caught a glimpse of something. Lo and behold, the summoning from earlier bared fruit because our favorite Sunbae was actually in the cafe in all of his long-haired glory. Who, after looking at Gunjun coldly, 
acted like he didn't see him at all. But Gunjun caught it, and it got him so distracted that he barely managed to respond to his date's questions. Even though Gunjun would like to think that what he and Jung Siak had is purely physical, he still suddenly felt guilty being caught having a date with some other guy, especially with the way that Jung Siak looked at him earlier. Evening came and it was already time for the two to be on their separate ways. Si Young Woo made it clear that he wanted to keep seeing Gun Jun, and the latter had no reason to reject it, although it was also true that ever since he made eye contact with Jung Si Yok earlier, Gun Jun couldn't concentrate on his date anymore. Then again, Si Young Woo seems like a nice lad by Gun Jun's standards. Although he's not that handsome, he makes up with his big body, which in turn made Gun Jun conclude that the dude has a blessed birdie as well. Therefore, after going through his 1 to 10 rules, a normal relationship between them should be possible. Ha, I still think he's a red flag. Although it could also be because I'm being biased. Anyways, fast forward to a couple of days later. Gun Jun found himself sighing while in front of his computer and doing some homework. For the past couple of days, ever since that eventful afternoon at the cafe, Gun Jun hadn't seen Jung Si Yak at all. It's starting to get to him that even his friends started noticing. And since there isn't really someone he can ask, Gunjun just made his guesses. Perhaps Jung Siak's sick or suddenly went to study abroad. Because if not for those, there's no way they wouldn't come across each other all this time. In an attempt to calm himself down, Gunjun eventually left his schoolwork and started to get into a position to service himself. All the while scolding himself for being so bothered by Jung Siak's sudden disappearance, even though they're not even dating. True, they get to have some fun a couple of times, but all of those were just mistakes. Then again, for some reason, he still can't stop thinking about it. In fact, after doing the nasty with Jung si Yok a couple of times, it seems like his black hole can't be satisfied with just his fingers anymore. And not even his toy to banana. After a couple of attempts, Gun Jun eventually decided to just give up and contended himself by staring at Jung si Yok's unread message to him. After a while, Gun Jun eventually accepted the fact that the second time that they actually did the deed didn't hurt as much as the first. He was even quick to finish. He then suddenly remembered the look that Jung Si Yak gave him that day at the cafe, like he just cheated on him or something. But see, more than anything, the thing that keeps on popping up in his mind is Jung Si Yak's not so small banana. This frustration eventually led to Gun Jun making up his mind. He has to do the nasty with Jung Si Yak one more time. In the days that followed, Gun Jun tried to look for Jung Si Yak around the campus, but to no avail. It's ironic since when he was trying to avoid him, Jung Siak was everywhere. And now that it's the other way around, Gun Jun can't even get any trace of him. Just as he was contemplating sending Jung Siak a message on his phone, Gun Jun overhears some students talking and mentioning Jung Siak's name. In fact, Gun Jun also hears his voice as if to confirm. When Gun Jun turned to the group of students passing by, he finally saw the one person he'd been looking for all this time, not letting this chance slip by, Gun Jun immediately rushed over in the direction of his seniors and called after Jung Siak. Luckily, despite that awkward moment at the cafe a couple of days ago, Jung Siak didn't turn him away. And so he sent his friends back, explaining that he'll talk to Gun Jun first. As Gun Jun and Jung Siak start walking away from the group, the latter's friends start whispering and making conclusions that perhaps Gun Jun is about to make a love confession or something. Well, it's not exactly wrong. Anyways, once the two of them are alone, somehow Gun Jun doesn't know what to say anymore, and instead just stays silent. That is until Jung Si Yok finally tells him that he'll just leave if Gun Jun doesn't really have anything to say to him, which left the younger man with no choice but to burst out his purpose. That is, for the two of them to do the nasty one more time. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's going to be easy. Jung Si Yok cordially rejected Gun Jun despite obviously being upset. And when asked why, Jung si Yok simply answered that it's because he doesn't do it with people who already have partners. And just like that, Gun Jun is left by himself reflecting on what he just did. I mean, I get that we're in the 21st century now. Still, we should maintain at least a minimum amount of self-respect. What? Hey. What does a single like me know, right? And so, fast forward to later that afternoon, Gun Jun was by himself again wallowing in self-pity by deciding to just follow his original plan of going out with Mr. Red Flag. Still, that doesn't mean that he's not upset, because he clearly is, so much so that even Du Yun who just came, knew something was up. Ever so perceptive, Du Yun pointed out how Gun Jun doesn't look like he really wants to be with the guy he's seeing, 
After all, Gunjun always gets excited whenever he starts dating someone. And yet now, he just looks like he was just rejected. It feels like it's just a heavy topic to talk about, but Do You didn't let it come to that point. Without letting Gunjun get a chance to explain himself, Do Yoon suddenly asks if the reason why the former has such a long face is because of Jung Siak. Gunjun tried to deny it at first, but his friend already got everything figured out. In fact, he was spot on in his theory that Gunjun did the nasty with her sunbae after he got drunk. After once again urging his friend to tell him the truth, Gunjun dutifully did as told. In fact, it was such a TMI that Do Yoon himself begged for Gunjun to stop sharing. The school bathroom part was especially disturbing. Anyways, to summarize everything, Gunjun really just wanted to be with Jung Siak for the last time, but he was rejected in a heartbeat, and that's why he's feeling so dejected right now. And since Do Yoon is not only perceptive, but also very logical, he asks Gunjun why not just start dating the dude in the first place. After all, his banana is big, and that's what Gunjun had been looking for. Gunjun then curiously asked how Do Yoon knew that Jung Siak's big and wondered if it was because he also did the nasty with him. Do Yoon denied it strongly and pointed out that Jung Siak was not his type at all. As for why he knew about the size, Do Yoon explained that he happened to meet their sunbae in the bathroom a few days ago and accidentally saw the not so small banana peeking out. Do Yoon then pointed out that Gunjun shouldn't let the banana go after tasting it, especially just so he can stick to his rules. After all, doing the humpy pumpy is vital in every relationship. Do Yoon himself won't even miss it for anything in the world. Despite sounding like a true perv, Gunjun also knew that his friend did have a sound point. His 1 to 10 rules isn't the only way to get into a relationship. If he wants this to work, then he has to compromise and find out if a proper relationship is possible between them. Okay, I know I said that having to compromise your standard is a big red flag. But in my defense, they're the MC and ML of this manhwa, so, of course, that rule doesn't apply. And no, I'm not accepting any objections from you. Days pass by, and Gunjun is once again on a quest to look for Jung Siak, although for a different reason compared to last time. No, wait. It's pretty much the same. Anyways, just like before, Jung Siak is nowhere to be found. In fact, he's not even in the place where he usually hangs out with friends. It's starting to get into Gunjun, that he's starting to get stupid thoughts like something happened to Jung Siak, or that he's avoiding him. As Gunjun was just about to wallow in self pity again somewhere, one of Jung Siak's friends called out to Gunjun, and for some reason, he addresses Gunjun comfortably, as if they're closely acquainted. I bet someone's been parroting his affection for him. Although even if that were really the case, it's a topic for some other time. Even though Jung Siak's friend acted like such an FC, it's not like Gunjun can do anything about it. Plus, this Sunbei might just be the very person that can help him at the moment. See, not only did this Sunbei figure out that Gunjun was looking for Jung Siak, he even so generously pointed him in the right direction to look for. Mr. Sunbei tells Gunjun that Jung Siak usually disappears on them around the exam period, and since Gunjun seemed really desperate to look for his friend, then he might as well look for Jung Siak in the library, where he most likely is. Although with doubts, Gunjun wasted no time and headed for the library, and just as he was told, Jung Siak is indeed in there, although he did look unrecognizable at first glance. What with Jung Siak wearing framed eyeglasses and a cap? Jung Siak looked so focused on the books he was reading that he didn't even notice Gun Jun as the younger man sat across him. Well, Gun Jun tried to give it some time, but Jung Siak didn't even look up once. Anyway, Jung Siak's focus somehow tempted Gun Jun to study as well, and so before he knew it, he was already taking out his book and started studying himself. Fast forward to a couple of hours later, it was already night, and the library's closing. It was time for the students to start packing up. Seeing as it was the first time that Jung Siak had looked up from his books, he just noticed Gunju now, and was really surprised. He immediately asked his junior, what and since when he had been there, to which Gunjun simply replied that it had been around four hours. Jung Siak then asked why Gunjun would do that, but then he seemed to have figured out the answer himself before Gunjun could say anything. Mr. Longhaired Sunbei just chuckled a bit, and without warning, suddenly stood up from his seat and reached across Gunjun to kiss the latter. And it's not just your typical peck either, ham. They were both so engrossed that if it weren't for the librarian calling out to them, awkwardly might I add, they probably wouldn't have stopped. The poor librarian just had to witness that PDA, 
right before her shift ended. Just imagine how uncomfortable that must have been. Not that the culprits cared. Especially Jung Siak, who hurriedly dragged Gunjun back to his place, without warning or explanation. Once the two of them reached the privacy of his place, Jung Siak immediately started making out with Gunjun. Right there by the entrance. Well, Gunjun did attempt to put a pause on it, insisting that he wants to take a shower first, since he's so sweaty. Unfortunately, the hygienic pleas were ignored. In fact, Jung Siak just went ahead and got down to business, loosening both of their pants so that their bananas could get acquainted again. And his excuse? He's in a hurry, so he wants to try Gunjun's body in his current state. So, what happened to not wanting to do the hanky-panky with someone who already has a partner? Gunjun still tried insisting on taking a shower first, but Jung si Yap really wouldn't budge. And so, the makeout session, not to mention the acquaintance party, continued until such a time that Gunjun reached his limit. As the younger man felt embarrassed for finishing first again, Jung si Yap just took it as a cue to take things a step further, this time using his fingers to invade Gunjun's black hole. After all, he needs more intense stimulation to finish, unlike Gunjun. To the younger man's expense, of course. Jung si Yak then asked Gunjun if he'd done it with somebody else recently, seeing as it's been a while since they last fooled around. But Gunjun's black hole is more loosened up than expected. And since they're already on the topic, Jung si Yak inquired if Gunjun did it with his blind date from that time. Jeez, this too can hold a grudge. Anyways, Gunjun denied the accusations and instead admitted that he loosened himself up and not anyone else. He had no choice since not only was Jung Siak persistent in his inquiries, he was also teasing Gunjun's black hole and nip knops as he waited for Gunjun to redeem himself. And he did more than redeem himself. To prove his point that he hadn't really been unfaithful to Jung Siak, or at the least, his black hole hadn't, Gunjun pulled his sunbae away from his nip knops and kissed the latter himself on the lips. And since Jung Siak is such a pushover when it comes to his junior, that was enough for him to take back what he said about not going to do the hanky-panky with Gunjun again. Jung Siak was just being polite when he asked permission to sheath his sword inside Gunjun's cave. Despite knowing that it was going to hurt him again, Gunjun didn't really resist or pull away. In just one stroke, Jung Siak had his sword fully embedded inside the cave. All while they're still standing by the entrance of his apartment, it was definitely an uncomfortable position for the both of them. Although the pleasure they felt at the same time washed it all away. With Jung Siak's sword still buried inside Gunjun's cave, the former carried the younger man in his arms and started to walk further inside his apartment. Despite the place not being that big, the walk was a struggle for both of them. Jung Siak struggled to move because of how tight the cave was. As for Gunjun, every step his carrier makes means that the sword inside is moving as well and is driving him crazy. And precisely because of that, once Jung Siak had finally laid Gunjun down on the couch, the latter let out another batch of pearls for the second time that night. Once again, Gunjun felt so embarrassed by this, although Jung Siak didn't really mind. Instead, he promised Gunjun that he'd move slower this time, so he could just get comfortable. Unfortunately, that didn't last too long. Before they know it, Gunjun is now the one asking Jung Siak to slow down instead. This time, though, the latter didn't give in and instead just told Gunjun to bear with it. After all, it was Gunjun himself who wanted to do the hanky-panky in the first place. Fast forward to the next day. Gunjun woke up with a start. The first thing he noticed was a short note from Jung Siak informing Gunjun that he had gone ahead, since he had exams, and that he had prepared a sandwich for him in the fridge. There's Yuna Doodle himself in there informing Gunjun that he looks cute when he's sleeping, but since Jung Siak's a fool for Gunjun, it's an unfounded statement. Gunjun giggled at the drawing and at the thought that Jung Siak was in fact terrible at it. The former's mirth, however, is immediately cut short when he realizes that perhaps he had fainted by himself last night. He can't really remember what happened. There's just one thing that he's confident about though, that last night was the first time he's ever felt good while doing the Waka Waka with someone. Well, 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 good for you. Too embarrassed to think about last night's events, he turned his attention to his growling stomach and was just about to get up to get the sandwich he was promised. That was when he realized that the shirt he had on was the only thing he was wearing, which made him curse at Jung Siak for his kind consideration. It was already a couple of minutes past noon when Gunjun finished his sandwich, his mind full of Jung Siak, as he wondered what time he had left earlier. After everything they did last night, 
the older dude still managed to leave early and even managed to buy food for him. As an afterthought, Gunjun gives credit to Jung Seok's big banana for his good physical condition. Anyways, since Gunjun was free for the rest of the day, he hurriedly tidied up and was contemplating either just going home or going to the library. If we take priority on his physical condition, the first option is ideal. But somehow, at the end of the day, Gunjun still ended up going to the library. He was surprised though when he arrived and noticed that Jung Seok wasn't in his usual spot, so he decided to look for him in some other places. This allowed Jung Seok a chance to ambush his junior with a surprise attack as if already expecting him there. Jung Seok then invited him to go with him since it seemed like he was on his way out of the building to smoke. I, however, would like to think that Jung Seok is just being considerate to the librarian in charge, who looked like she was traumatized from their antics the day before. Once outside, Jung Seok asked how Gunjun felt and even apologized that he couldn't stay with him until he woke up. Instead of giving a proper answer, however, the latter just asked what time Jung Seok had left and then asked again if he had time to get proper sleep after Jung Seok said that he left around 9 in the morning. But Jung Seok assured him it was fine since he fell asleep as soon as Gunjun fainted. Since our MC had already steeled himself on embarrassment, for fainting while they were in the middle of a happy time, he is now blushing and concerned about the fact that the two of them had slept on the same bed, although he's too shy to say anything out loud. Anyways, Jung Seok suddenly invited Gunjun to have dinner together later. At first, Gunjun was confused about why his sunbae would go that far when they were not even dating. Still, the affirmation from him was easily received when Jung Seok reasoned that it was the least he could do for Gunjun, who came to the library to see him. That, plus the petting Jung Siak gave on Gunjun's head. At this point, it's safe to say they're both pushovers when it comes to each other. Not long after, the two of them went back to the library to do some studying again. At first, Gunjun struggled to concentrate since every time he glanced at his sunbae, he would remember the bedroom rodeo they had done last night. He was also amazed at Jung Siak's level of concentration since, unlike Gunjun, not even once did the former turn to look in his direction just like yesterday. Experiencing this side of Jung Seok made Gunjun see him in a different light. After all, he had always thought that his senior was the type to play around. They have this unique side, you know. These dudes who grow their hair and can even pull it off. For what it's worth though, Gunjun is hopeful that this time, negotiations will end well in his favor. Fast forward to a couple of hours later, it seemed like Jung Seok had looked forward to their dinner more since Gunjun was still so focused on studying when the former had caught his attention, so they could leave for dinner. Well, Gunjun couldn't wait to leave as well, especially after noticing Ms. Librarian, who seems to be paying them close attention after last night's treat. As for the dinner, Jung Siok brought Gunjun to a fancy restaurant, overlooking the city nightlights. Gunjun couldn't help but feel that they were on some sort of a date, and how envious other people would be of him, since the dude's quite popular. By now, Gunjun also thinks that Jung Siak is handsome, and yes, this is the same Gunjun who said he hated Jung Siak's hairstyle. Anyways, as their meals were served, Gunjun noticed that even the waitress couldn't keep her eyes off his handsome date, who didn't only have looks, also manners as well. Gunjun's second meal for the day was also spent with his head filled with thoughts of Jung Siak. Like how he stands out because of his long hair and height, he's also good with aftercare, not to mention has a lot of friends. Our MC's train of thought, though, was interrupted when Jung Siok asked him if he didn't like the food and company, pointing out how Gunjun is barely touching his food and looks like he's avoiding looking at his direction as well. Jung Siok then started hinting that he knew Gunjun had something to say to him. The comment made Gunjun feel more awkward and uncomfortable, so he just went on and said it. The younger man asked Jung Siok if the two of them were now dating, to which Mr. Longhaired Dude replied that they're just friends. Ouch. The reply, of course, upset Gunjun. He was really expecting something more than that, since they had already crossed the line a couple of times. But since he can't also let things end at that, Gunjun asked Jung Siok why he decided to do the hanky-panky with him in the first place. Unfortunately, the reply was even more upsetting than the first one. Jung Siok said that he only did it because not only were the two of them single at that time, but he was also amused by Gunjun's disposition. I know what you guys are thinking, but let's just chill for now, okay. We still have a couple of chapters left before the video ends. 
In all fairness, Gunjun genuinely felt hurt and betrayed by Jung Seok's reply. It's so disheartening to think that he almost fell for Jung Seok's handsome, kind and polite disposition. Because in reality, he's just your typical F-boy. We'll get busy with anyone he finds interesting. Seeing as Gunjun is now feeling down, it's Jung Seok's turn to feel anxious and wonder why the former wants to know the reason why he did that with him. Going back to that night when all of these started, but this time from Jung Seok's point of view, we now see that the two of them meeting at that time was not a coincidence, because Jung Seok was actually waiting for Gunjun to appear then. Not only that, but it seems like Jung Seok already knew Gunjun, although he had just confirmed that Gunjun is gay. This made him wonder, though, why the younger man is uncomfortable around him, when he's usually quite popular with them. Anyways, Jung Seok was amused when Gunjun didn't seem to recognize him even when they were already face to face, although he blamed the alcohol for that. And most especially when the only thing that Gunjun said was that Jung Seok looked like the snobbish jerk that he knew. Feeling disappointed that Gunjun didn't really seem to remember him, he started humoring Gunjun with talks of exes with small bananas. It was at this point when Jung Seok decided that if Gunjun couldn't recognize or remember him and their history, then he should just make sure this time he would become someone that he couldn't ever forget. Anyways, a recollection is only meant for the audience's eyes and ears. And that's why instead of sharing everything with Gunjun now and risking getting asked more questions he's not yet ready to answer, Jung Seok filtered most of it and instead just claimed how it made him curious that Gunjun suddenly appeared ranting about his ex's banana. He also got curious about Gunjun's reaction, if they did the deed since he's pretty blessed himself. Safe to say, this confession just made it to Gunjun's most embarrassing moments list, especially after Jung Seok added that he had fun trying to get a hold of him since Gunjun kept on running away from him after that night. After all, Gunjun only did it because he thought that his senior didn't recognize him. Seeing as Gunjun is determined to hold his ground and not fall for Jung Seok's teasing, the older dude changes tactics by reminding Gunjun how he still hadn't given him the answer to his question about whether his banana was good enough or not. In response, Gunjun, slowly and quietly, admitted that the first time it was just painful because of the size. Although now, he's getting used to it and is starting to like it. But despite that being the case, Gunjun also added that they shouldn't continue what they were doing. Because however you look at it, they're technically just F buddies. Gunjun then whispered shouted to Jung Seok how he felt awful after he did it with a senior he barely knew, not to mention how he seemed like a total perv who was addicted to bananas. Oh, and let's not forget that Jung Seok is also an F boy who goes around doing it for fun. After the whisper shout, Jung Seok is now positive that Gunjun really doesn't remember him. The more important thing to notice, though, is that now Gunjun thinks that he's an F boy who's only in it for fun. Humoring his speculations, Jung Seok asks our MC what's wrong with doing that. To which our MC self righteously pointed out that doing it under such conditions is pretentious and that you should only date and do the nasty with someone you actually like. With these strong beliefs, Jung Seok now understood why Gunjun refused his kiss the first time they got busy, and then the makeout sessions they did yesterday came to mind and made him blush with hope. Not letting the chance pass by, Jung Seok suggested that if that were the case, then the two of them should just start dating. Jung Seok is trembling with excitement and mirth, as Gunjun didn't outright reject the idea this time, and instead just bargained that they can start doing that after they do the nasty one more time. Of course, Jung Seok is all up for it, although he gave his condition of doing it after the exams are over, and that for Gunjun to promise not to faith again on him. Gunjun's last class for the day ended, and the first thing he did as he left the classroom was check his phone. To be more specific, check his message log with Jung Seok. Earlier that day, Jung Seok sent Gunjun a message, informing him that he'd be in the library our MC dutifully sent a nonchalant reply. But the problem here is his sunbae had replied nor seen his message. Gunjun was just thinking about what to do next when he felt a couple of creeps looming behind him, who for some reason had taken the appearances of his loveless friends, bitter at the thought of him being in a relationship again. They started accusing him of having a new girlfriend, since lately he's not hanging with them anymore. Gunjun was just about to defend his case, but then good old Du Yoon suddenly left a comment pointing out that there was no way Gunjun would ever get a girlfriend. Their friends who didn't know their preferences misunderstood the comment. Although Gunjun resented Du Yun for almost getting him caught, at least they managed to somehow get their friends off his back. Changing the topic, Gunjun suddenly exclaimed that they needed to study since it was already exam season. 
And just like that, Gun Jun left his friends following Du Yun, who already went ahead, leaving the rest of their friends wondering why Gun Jun would study for exams when it's still going to happen next week. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the difference between top students and the majority of the plebs. Anyways, Gun Jun eventually decided to come to the library to study for the third time. He feels a bit awkward, since he usually studies at home. But it's not really the place, but the company that he's after. As expected, Jung Siak is in his usual spot, unmoving and focused on his review materials. Not once looking up, as Gun Jun occupies the spot across from him. Gun Jun is still upset, since he didn't receive a reply to his last message, to the point that he regretted coming to the library. Although he eventually consoled himself by rationalizing that he was just there to review for his exams. Shortly after, Gun Jun was already in the middle of click clacking on his laptop when something suddenly made him blush and look at Jung Siok's direction. Turns out, the latter deliberately caught his attention to make Gun Jun look up from his laptop and to Jung Siok's happily grinning face now waving at him. It was such a simple form of flirting and yet had such an intense effect on Gun Jun. Embarrassed and confused by his involuntary behavior, Gun Jun attempted to use his laptop screen to cover his flushing face from Jung Siok. That was when another doodle slowly made its way in front of Gun Jun's screen, asking that they go home together later. Evening came, and Gun Jun dutifully waited for Jung Siok outside the library building. As the latter approached him, he asked Gun Jun why he left first, when the two of them could have just walked out together. Gun Jun explained that it would be weird. If the two of them were always seen walking out together, not to mention embarrassing. I bet he's talking about Ms. Librarian, not pushing the matter. Jung Siok just tells him that it's about time they go and start walking ahead. As Gun Jun followed from behind, he couldn't help but wonder how easy it was for Jung Siok to get all touchy feely as he pleased. Well, he wants to do the same, but gets caught by his sunbay before Gun Jun can even reach out for his hand. Perhaps he noticed this, or maybe he genuinely wanted to. Jung Siok reached out for Gun Jun's hand while asking if he could hold it. Gun Jun didn't resist, although he did point out that it's useless to ask when he's just going to do it anyway. And just like that, with the two of them held each other's hand while walking, talking about trivial stuff and flirting like your typical couple. The two of them built a routine in the coming days as if they already started dating for real. That's to say, they would study together in the library and eat meals together as they try to get to know little things about each other. And if they ran into each other within the campus, Jung Siok would make subtle contact, if only to make Gun Jun blush hotly. Other than that, there's no other contact at all. One evening, Jung Siok visited Gun Jun's apartment after the former insisted. After staying for a cup of tea, Jung Siok eventually decided to leave. Gun Jun was disappointed. After all, he had thought that his sunbae would sleep over for the night. Clearly, that wasn't the case. Still, it's not like Jung Siok left Gun Jun with nothing. To Gun Jun's surprise, Jung Siok suddenly kisses him and tells him that they'll see each other after the exams are over. Dumbfounded, it was just now that Gun Jun realized the reason behind the lack of proper physical contact between them. He remembered the conversation they had back at that fancy restaurant when he said that they could start going out for real after they get funky once, and Jung Siok agreed to it, given that they'd do it after the exams. Gun Jun couldn't believe that Jung Siok would actually hold on to that. Two days later, Gun Jun finally finished all of his exams. He was confident that he would get good grades this time. What with all the studying he did in the past few days? His thoughts slowly diverted to his sunbae, whose exams were yet to finish the next day. Suddenly, his friends called out to him, who then started teasing him about acing the exams, since he's always in the library, and once again accused him of seeing someone there. Gun Jun denied the accusations, insisting that he's really just studying in the library because he's aiming for a scholarship. Q and Du Yun who asks him why he's not going to the library today for the said scholarship. At first, Gun Jun didn't immediately catch on that Du Yun was actually unto him, so he just took the latter's words literally. Gun Jun pointed out that libraries don't just give out scholarships, to which Du Yun replied that he should still go, since he might just get something huge out of it, and just consider it the scholarship instead. Heh. Well, eventually Gun Jun caught on and blushed furiously as he tried to scold Du Yun for his cheekiness. The rest of their friends didn't have any idea what they were talking about, of course. Instead, they just got invited to go out drinking to celebrate their freedom. It was Gun Jun who first refused the invitation, claiming that he already had plans. His friends were skeptical, since there was no way someone single would have plans in their logic, 
And that's why they are back to accusing Gunjun of dating someone, and just being sneaky about it. This time, Du Yun got his back, of sorts, pointing out that Gunjun's plans must have something to do with his scholarship, and that he's busy too, so he'll have to pass as well. Without another word, Du Yun left, and Gunjun followed soon after. Later that evening, Gunjun had just finished washing up, and was kind of regretting that he didn't go with his friends for drinks. It's been a while since he got home, and since there's nothing else to do. He spent his time either playing games or contemplating whether he was going to text his sunbae or not. And given that the said sunbae is quite serious about his studies, it seems that he'll only be receiving replies from him the next day, once the exams are over. If only he hadn't gone out with his friends, he wouldn't have to wait like this. As Gunjun was thinking about Jung Siok and the things that they were supposed to do after all their exams were over, he flushed as he realized that his little sword suddenly stood on full alert. Despite being alone in the room, Gunjun still felt so embarrassed. However, he quickly recovered and consoled himself that since Jung Siak will probably go beast mode on him tomorrow anyway, then might as well just do the preparations himself ahead of time. Without wasting time, Gunjun took out his toy banana and lubes and started preparing his black hole. It was so tight at first that he didn't think his toy banana would fit either, but he persisted and soon one finger became two, and the two fingers eventually paved the way for the toy. All the while, he was also servicing himself, using his hands and thinking about Jung Siak. Gun Jun was so into what he was doing that he didn't even notice Jung Siak had sent him a message asking if he was home. Anyways, by the time Gun Jun starts playing with his toy on himself, his head is once again filled with thoughts about his sunbae. In fact, he hopes that once they do it again, he can see Jung Siak finish off as well, curious as to what expression his sunbae will make. His fantasizing, however, was cut short when his doorbell went off. At first, he was just flustered, as he wondered who would come to visit him this late at night. Suddenly, Jung Siak's voice called out Gun Jun's name from outside the door. To say that the latter is surprised would be an understatement. The moment Jung Siak called out to Gun Jun to open the door for him, Gun Jun wasted no time taking out his toy out of his black hole and hiding it under his sheets, not to mention the louves, all while chanting a prayer as he hurriedly put on his clothes. Obviously, Jung Siak didn't really mean anything when he decided to visit Gun Jun late. He really just wanted to eat some fried chicken with Gun Jun. But as the latter opened his front door and greeted the older man with a very flushed face, perhaps it's quite accurate to say that Jung Siak's in for some treat as well.